Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos related to geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the Geo Ecologist. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing as we are going to complete each and every topic related to geography. Now in today's session on population geography, we are going to learn about the various aspects of population growth, distribution, factors and all other aspects related to the world population distribution and world population geography. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's discuss about the growth and distribution of world population. When I say growth and distribution, it is essentially understood that in population geography, the first part is quantitative in nature and the second part is the distribution in terms of the space and time. So we say that demography together with this distribution forms the core aspects of population geography. Now population growth is loosely defined in what ways? In the change in number of individuals in population over an area over time. Here is the space and time again that you need to consider. Right? Before that, only population data, if you consider, it's just numbers or it's just the calculation. Right? But when we say population geography, the spatial and temporal components are important. Now, if you observe this particular graph of the world population growth, what you observe? 1700 to 2100. That is the projection here. Now observe about 17th century. The population is 600 million and actually the estimation is that it goes to 10.9 billion by the end of this 21st century. Now this is the projection that we observe here. So what do you find here? That population projection says that there is a exponential growth, right? The word is exponential, right? So e to the power n that what we say. So in this way what you observe from almost the 19th century to this part, this is where the population has grown multifolds. Right? And what, why it has grown multifolds? Because of several things that we are going to talk in today's session. So let's understand now. So the first thing that we need to consider here is another set of data that says population between 1800 to 21st century. Now observe this data and especially with relation to China and India, if you observe the trends, what you find out that 400 million mark, it is about in 18th century. And now if you observe India, right, by 21st century, it's going to be about 1.4 billion, right, from 1.6 billion and 1.7 billion at the top, right, that is around 2050 that is estimated. So what does it mean? The countries like India and China are the world leaders of population growth, right? It means the facilitation factors, the factors associated with the growth of population were concentrated in these two major countries of Asia. So if you look into the world pattern of population growth, Asia is the leader because of these two heavy countries here, India and China, right? So observe now that what was the history from 10,000 BC till 20th century, what you observe during 8,000 before Christ, the world population was estimated to be 5 million only. Now we are going to cross almost 10 billion by 2050, that is the estimation. So men were primarily hunters, women were primarily food gatherers through plant gatherings and everything. So hunter and gathering community to the settlers and agrarian communities where only four persons per square kilometer was the average population density, right? High birth rate, death rate. Remember, we talked about this population theory and growth in the models and theories in geography as well, right? So what do you observe further? Further, if you observe, there is one revolution that changed the population growth across the world. That was food, agricultural revolution, right? So about 8000 BC and further, there was decline of the food supply. So people felt need of growing their own food and more of agrarian communities and settlers started to the, rule the world. So what you observe here, that about 1650, if you observe, we already crossed 500 million mark because of the agrarian revolution, right? So food supply and the population growth were going hand in hand. And remember Malthusian theory of population that talks about this. So further what you observe, this graph will tell you the story here, right? So if you observe 8000 BC, the marker for agrarian revolution, right? Although it began about 10,000 BC itself. So what do you find after that? 
from agrarian to industrial revolution in 18th century this is the way it was going and after industrial revolution diversification of economy opportunities working factor economic factor social factor all the factors changed and there was a huge growth and further what you observe is the exponential growth and what other revolutions took place medical revolution green revolution it revolution that's what we are looking into right so these are the factors that led to huge population growth in just 200 years that's what we have seen in the previous graphs as well now if you observe the curves that are defined so this is called j curve if you observe this is the j shape whenever i say j curve it simply means the exponential growth of population right and when you say s shape it is on the basis of expectation for future where it goes a little flat in the curve it means what in future there will be stabilization of the population the growth will subside right so this is where we are looking from j curve to the s curve that we observe so j curve and s curve are commonly used to denote the exponential growth of population and future stabilization of the population right so these are the two things to understand now what happened in medieval times it's also important so medieval period there was more emphasis on trade and commerce right so what you observe due to trade and commerce what happened the development of cities towns trading towns consumer goods started taking place and big business houses started settling it means what the economic structure changed and that impacted the social structure the family size right and everything was in accordance it was planned so then industrial revolution led to the increase in population as we know and further exponential growth started from 18th century and by 20th century we are here so what are the things due to development of medical services the death rate got down and when death rate is low and birth rate is still high it means we are going up so what happened for example life expectancy in india in 1901 it was just 23 years and it stood at 65 in 2001 look at this change it's a very interesting change if you observe then green revolution biotechnology all of this led to the huge amount of population explosion across the developing countries of the world so if you observe now how do we look into the patterns there is something called the doubling time of population growth so distribution of world population if you observe one thing that we need to consider is also the doubling time if you observe what is there in 1930 it was 2 billion in 1960 it was 3 billion in 1975 it was 4 billion and so on by 2012 it is 7 billion right so what do you observe from 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 7 how it has changed and how many years in between this is what we look into the doubling time of population apart from this if you want a world data in a precise manner in a comprehensive manner just look here the continent wise distribution this is the red one where asia dominates the top heavy countries india and china and after that you have the other shares right of the other countries if you can observe and also by this graph if you observe the total world population share developing regions have more population developed regions have lesser population right in billions if you observe by timeline right so this is what is the concern here that developing countries have the huge population and in terms of distribution there is a lopsidedness clear cut evident developing versus developed debate continues in population growth and distribution as well so what you observe the un projection of 2100s if you observe this particular map this is one map that will tell you the story where are the deeper ones more than 1 billion population in the world so you observe these areas of the world where you have greater population right and then there are lighter shades right so you observe the european countries and also some of the african countries and south american countries australia and new zealand tasmania all those areas if you observe there are certain areas of very low population certain areas of extremely high population in developed countries if you observe very slow population growth less than one percent and also it's also supposed to be called racial suicide by many scholars right it's supposed to be race suicide because you don't have enough growth rate to sustain or continue the minimum replacement level as well that's where we are looking for so what do you observe pattern of growth if you observe positive growth is happening in us and australia stagnation in southeast european countries especially and negative growth in russia norway sweden romania so that's what we we'll look into these countries right now let's understand at the factors so what are the factors of low population growth in developed countries why is it so low so the primary factor for low population growth in developed countries is the socio-economic transformation of these countries so more emphasis is on career perspective 
right? The hectic and fast life affects the traditional social system. Then joint family system has collapsed. It has become more individualistic societies. And result of all these factors is there is a frequent break of the marriage system. So what happens because of all these systems? There is a very slow progress in population growth there. Also negative growth has been observed at many places. So if you observe, these societies have these particular characteristics. High level of literacy, high level of female literacy, high job opportunities, scientific approach towards religion, then urbanization, industrialization, no poverty. So what happens? The population subsides because of this. Right. And if you observe problems of low population growth in these countries, so they have demographic problems as well, over aging populations, shortage of labor, schools being closed, government investment is more on social services schemes, liberalization of migration laws by many countries and also pluralistic societies and cultures. Right. That's what is there. Now, if you observe the developing countries, developing countries have a lot of problem because of overpopulation, just opposite of developed countries. So explosive growth, rapid growth, moderate growth and slow growth. This is the example of the countries if you observe and the same map is here. So what do you observe? The countries like India, Indonesia, Nigeria, Bangladesh and Brazil, they are large size countries and significantly heavier growth rate is happening here. Right. And that's why there are a lot of problems according to it. If you observe Ashok Mitra's statement, these are the countries whose real problem is increased fertile group of the population. So increased fertile group means the 15 to 60. That is what is the working population. Right. And it is so much in numbers that we are looking into the problems across the developing countries. Now problems of rapid growth of population. This is the list. So you already know, I believe population has problems in education, food, housing, all these are the major problems of developing countries, then increasing in the workforce would lead to the increase in the growth of unemployment. Then what we have is rise of dependent population, then food and nutrition problems, food and nutrition security, a big challenge and in sustainable development goals also we have mentioned it. Then economic backwardness, illiteracy, unemployment, rapid growth of urbanization and slums alongside and environmental degradation and over exploitation of resources. Right. So this is what we say is the divide in the world. Remember the land man ratio. This is also very important. Right. So if 17 to 18 percent of the people are concentrated just on 4 percent of world land, think about that ratio. So this is how we are looking here. Right. Now, this is one graph that will also tell you about something related to the world's biggest countries by population by 2100s. And this is coming from World Economic Forum. So if you look here, it's clearly saying India is leading the chart, crossing 1.5 billion mark. Then in second number, we have China, then Nigeria, then United States, then Congo, Pakistan, Indonesia, Tanzania, Ethiopia, Uganda. So India, China, Pakistan, these three countries are lying in the top seed. It means what Asia is going to be the hub of population and population related problems as well. So this is where we need to plan our population. We need to know our details. We need to create awareness about the population policies. This is what we need to look into. So this is the world picture of the population growth and its distribution. In the sessions to come, we'll be talking more on the factors and several other topics. So I hope you understood the entire detail and the comparison of developed. Developing more developed countries have other issues. Developing countries have different issues related to population growth and distribution. So now when we have discussed about the various aspects of population growth and distribution of world population in the sessions to come, we'll be talking more on other aspects of population geography and several other topics. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also do share the videos with others as well.